Welcome to the Majestic Truth Podcast. Join us as we delve into the mysteries of the universe, explore the unexplained, and shed light on some of the most important events that have occurred and are occurring in our world today. Get ready to open your mind, expand your horizons, and discover the extraordinary. This is the Majestic Truth Podcast. And now your host, Michelle. Welcome aboard, Truth Seekers. Fasten your seatbelts and prepare for an unforgettable ride. Together we'll question, explore, and embrace the majesty of truth. I'm so grateful you're here today. So today, we're going to be doing a full review of the movie, Accidental Truth. If you want to check out the show notes for this episode, head on over to MajesticTruth.com forward slash episode four. And you can check out the movie trailer and there's a brief overview of the movie there as well. All right, quick movie summary from MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. The truth can no longer be contained by those duty-bound to hide it. What if there was one film that will bring a mainstream audience up to speed on the modern UFO reality? Now there is. Accidental Truth, UFO Revelations, pulls no punches. Officials who interact with the public regarding the UFO question openly acknowledge that they know things that they can't reveal. In Accidental Truth, the reality of an advanced intelligence engaging humanity becomes undeniably clear. You will witness revelations on UFOs, UAPs from government insiders that have never been previously shared with the public. From many years of interviews and investigations, Ron James painstakingly connects the dots. Colonel John Alexander, Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Nick Pope, we all know Nick Pope from Ancient Aliens, Dr. Gary Nolan, Ralph Blumenthal from the New York Times, Congressman Tim Burchett, and others to help accidentally weave a story that leaves no doubt that another intelligence is somehow operating around us, above us, in our atmosphere, beneath our seas, and in outer space. Decades of official denial and debunking are irrevocably put to rest in what is being called one of the best UFO films of all time. A collection of contributors from across the field all come together to settle the question. The subject is no longer up for debate. You will experience the proof. The acknowledgement of another advanced intelligence is only the beginning. This irrefutable truth creates more questions than you can possibly imagine. Accidental truth, UFO revelations, is being called a masterpiece and one of the best UFO documentaries of all time by early reviewers. It has been accepted into 12 film festivals so far and won seven awards. It came out on April 18th, 2023. So um, I'm going to play you some audio from the trailer. I'm hoping that this episode and these clips that I'm about to play for you will entice you to check out this movie. It is a must-see. The UFO reality can no longer be denied. In 2017, the New York Times broke a front-page story about a shadowy government program The Pentagon had this secret UFO monitoring agency which nobody knew about. Don't ask me because I'm not going to tell you. Instead of answers, we've been given a new narrative. The UAPs are not ours or any foreign governments. Then the question is, whose are they? You can ask the questions, but who are you going to ask them of? And you've got to make sure you're asking the right people. There are many things that are out there in the ether aren't officially brought to our attention. How would it have to be officially brought to your attention? I'm bringing it to your attention. Do you expect to see real answers in this report? Uh, Honestly, I don't think so, Jake. Memorable quote in that is, technology not of this earth, not made by man. That's a profound moment. So have you studied classified materials, but you just don't have them? I just shouldn't say anything more. Individuals at the Pentagon confirmed the Roswell spacecraft real. It's just a complete cover-up. 
Some phenomena point to an interaction with consciousness. Maybe the physical evolved from consciousness. Life may exist in all sorts of forms. The question is, what's our definition of life? Wow. So um, that's just here in the audio trailer. I recommend watching the video trailer, which we'll have on the show notes page. Please watch it. Check it out. Um, you can watch this film on Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV, Redbox, Vide uh, Vimeo On Demand, um, uh, Google Play. It's all over the place. And um, it's worth renting. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible. Okay. Now let's jump to some audio sound bites. This first soundbite is the intro to who Lou Elizondo is and a bit of his background and his association with the program known as ATIP. The program was established. It was initially called AWSAP, Advanced Aerospace Weapons Sensor Application Program, um, and very quickly there evolved, morphed into the more common vernacular ATIP, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. I was brought in initially to come in to run the counterintelligence and security piece for this uh, effort in 2008. Uh, in 2010, I was asked by the former director to, to run this program. Uh, the program was then taken out of DIA and, and up to the OSD level, Office of Secretary of Defense. Okay, so that's some background on Lou Elizondo, which I'm sure most of you have heard all about Lou. He's a brave man. Now we have a clip from a commander, David Fravor, who saw a UFO during a training mission in 2004, and here's what he says. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. So we have a retired Navy commander saying what he saw was not of this world. Talk about credibility. How can this be ignored? Next up, we have Congressman Tim Burchett, Republican from Tennessee, who has become an outspoken crusader against the secrecy. The American public deserves to know I'm, I, we need transparency. That's why nobody trusts government. Nobody trusts either party when it comes down to it. No kidding, Tim. You couldn't be more correct. So now, here we have a clip of another congressman at the beginning of the first congressional UFO hearings in over 40 years. Congressman Andre Carson saying the following. More than 50 years ago, the U.S. government ended Project Blue Book, an effort to catalog and understand sightings of objects in the air that could not otherwise be explained. For more than 20 years, that project had treated unidentified anomalies in our airspace as a national security threat to be monitored and investigated. In 2017, we learned for the first time that the Department of Defense had quietly restarted a similar organization tracking what we now call unidentified aerial phenomena. So in 2017, the government starts up another program to study UAPs quietly. Why quietly? Does the public not have a right to know what its government is looking into? Now, 70 years ago, Air Force General John Samford had his own commentary on July 31st, 1952 describing what was occurring in the skies over Washington, D.C., and here's his statement on flying saucers. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. However, there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. Incredible things. So this government studying of UFOs has been ongoing for decades. I don't believe after they shut down Project Blue Book 
that they ever truly stopped studying this aerial phenomenon. Now, here's a clip from Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, Ronald Moultrie, about service members encountering UAPs. We know that our service members have encountered unidentified aerial phenomena. And because UAPs pose potential flight safety and general security risk, we are committed to a focused effort to determine their origins. While I appreciate their effort to determine their origins, I have one question. Well, I have many. But a question here is, when you determine their origins, do you plan to let the public know your findings? I'm just asking, you know, for a friend. Okay, now to Ralph Blumenthal, a reporter for the New York Times, has written many articles on UFOs, UAPs, has this to say, and at the tail end of the clip, you will hear a quick soundbite from Congressman Tim Burchett again. The government has a lot to answer for. You're absolutely right. Uh, the, the history of the subject has been replete with misinformation and disinformation. It's just a complete cover-up. I would like to just commend Mr. Blumenthal and Congressman Burchett because it takes courage to write these articles and to make these statements. All right, now let's hear from Edgar, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, on a, an Apollo astronaut who is best known for typing 80 lines of code to save the entire Apollo 14 mission as it descended to the moon in 1971. And thus confirming and had confirmed that the Roswell incident was real. They saw some of the material from the crash uh, spacecraft. Uh, some saw bodies from the beings that were killed in that crash. Uh, there were some that saw a live being. A live being had been uh, taken away and uh, was in the system somewhere. So those were real life incidents that uh, were reported to me. Um, this is an Apollo astronaut saying incidents that were reported to him. They saw parts of the crash spacecraft. Alien bodies, a live being, a live being being taken away. Well, what do you know? What do you know? Incredible. Now we're going to hear from Paul Hynek, the son of Project Blue Book's Dr. J. Allen Hynek. My father was the chief scientific consultant working alongside Air Force counterparts. And it became clear that the role of Project Blue Book wasn't to look for the truth, but was to manufacture answers and to tamp down hysteria. Somebody called it the Society for the Explanation of the Uninvestigated. So the role of Project Blue Book wasn't to look for the truth. It was to manufacture answers. <laughs> Wrap your head around that. So the government didn't want us to know the truth. They created Blue Book to figure out a way to explain this with false statements to basically like get us off the trail. So this is really at the heart of the public's mistrust in government. So basically figure out a way to get the public to look the other way by giving us a manufactured answer rather than giving us the truth. Folks, uh, we are reviewing the movie Accidental Truth. You really, really have to see this movie. These are just the smallest clips. This movie has, it's filled with amazing moments that are just going to make you dog head tilt and go, what? Say what? You know, so you're really going to want to see this movie, Accidental Truth. Our next clip is from Senator Barry Goldwater, who was a Republican senator from Arizona in 1953 to 1965 and from 1969 to 1987. He also ran for president in 1964. He didn't win, but just to give you an idea of who he is. At Wright Patterson Field, if you could get into certain places, you'd find out what the Air Force and the government knows about UFOs. Reportedly, a spaceship landed. It was all hushed up, quieted, and nobody ever, I've never heard about much of it. I called Curtis LeMay and I said, General, uh, I know we have a room at Wright-Patterson where you put all this secret stuff. Can I go in there? I've never heard him get mad. 
But he got madder than hell at me, cussed me out, said, don't ever ask me that question. So Senator Goldwater calls the general and asks to see the room at Wright-Patterson. And the general gets super mad. And maybe this reaction is for Goldwater's protection. We don't know. And to let him know this is not something to ever discuss with him nor anyone else for that matter. So now we jump ahead to a clip from the Senate public hearing on UFOs on May 17, 2022. Senator Gallagher is asking the UAP task force representatives if they are aware of any government programs between Project Blue Book and ATIP. And he's given the runaround. So you're not aware of anything in between Project Blue Book and ATIP? Okay. Hasn't been uh, brought to my attention. That data is not uh, within the holdings of the UAP task force. There are many things that are out there in the ether that aren't officially brought to our attention. So how would it have to be officially brought to your Excuse attention? Either. I'm bringing it to your attention. Sure. So probably a lot of leads that we would have to follow up on. I don't think we have resource to do that right now. Uh, all I can speak to is, you know, what's within my cognizance, the UAP task force, and we have not looked at that incident. What? What? Mind-blowing. Gallagher continues to describe UAPs flying over sensitive military facilities. Been UAP observed uh, and interacting with and flying over sensitive military facilities, particularly and not just ranges, but uh, some facilities housing our strategic nuclear forces. Uh, one such incident allegedly occurred uh, uh, at Malmstrom Air Force Base, in which 10 of our nuclear ICBMs were rendered inoperable. I have heard stories. I have not seen the official data. No official assessment that you've done or exists within DOD that you're aware of uh, regarding the Malmstrom incident. We have not looked at that incident. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, if, who else is doing it? I mean, Gallagher is calling them out on the carpet here. You guys are supposed to be the ones investigating this. Like, what are you doing? Or better yet, why aren't you disclosing what you know? Okay, now let's jump to a retired United States Army Colonel, John Alexander. UFOs have been around, you know, since, again, the, the beginning of time or recorded history as we know it. Um, it is a global phenomenon. Yes, we do know it. And yes, they have been around. The evidence of this is overwhelming. Colonel John Alexander was present when Skinwalker Ranch was purchased by Robert Bigelow. I was with Bob, uh, Robert Bigelow owned it. I was with Bob the day he bought the ranch, was the first one to uh, uh, stay, you know, spend the night. We spent years looking at that. Yes, the famous Skinwalker Ranch. Love that show. If you haven't seen that show, please check it out. It's incredible. So Colonel Alexander personally witnesses various phenomenon, I'm sure, while spending time at the ranch. So... Now, here's a clip of Lou Elizondo on Tucker Carlson. I mean, you guys have maybe already, and gals maybe have already seen this clip. Um, it's it's kind of all over the place um, out there on YouTube and such. But um, it's a really great clip. And this is, I think, an example of an accidental truth. You think the U.S. government has debris from a UFO in its possession right I, now. Unfortunately, Tucker, I, I really have to be careful of my NDA. I really can't go into a lot of more detail in that. Okay. But uh, simply put, yes. Wrap your head around that. This is coming from the former director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, a.k.a. ATIP. He says yes to do you think the U.S. government has debris from a UFO? Just wow. Now let's hear from Robert Bigelow on UFOs machinery. Machinery really does exist. Does exist. The, the problem has been <clears throat> the inability to back engineer. And I kind of think that some, <clears throat> some things require a weightless environment. So here, Mr. Bigelow is confirming UFO machinery does exist, but we don't have the ability to reverse engineer. And a lot of it is because we don't have a weightless environment, a.k.a. gravity. Welcome to Earth. Robert Bigelow was asked on 60 Minutes if he believes in aliens. Do you believe in aliens? I'm absolutely convinced. That's all there is to it. Do you also believe that UFOs have come to Earth? There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. An existing presence. Um, freaky stuff here. It's just confirming what we know. 
Now, this quote is brilliant and great for this movie, which you really, really must see. I mean, you are only hearing small snippets of all of the info presented. But here's a quote from Dr. Gary Nolan, a professor at Stanford University. What it is, no one's admitted yet, and you've got plenty of video evidence of Lou and Chris not admitting it because they can't say it, but they've said it in as many ways as you can. You know, just anybody bright enough to listen will, as you say, understand the accidental truth. I mean, based on all of these clips alone, the factor is clear. UFOs are real. They do exist, and our government has been studying them and covering up what they know about them for decades. So back to Lou Elizondo discussing dimensions. Other dimensions may absolutely exist. You look at string theory, look at M theory. Dimensions are all around us. So um, I I think you have to cast a wide net when you're looking at this. And that's why I've said before, whether they're from outer space, inner space, or the space in between, we just don't know. And we need to collect more data. Is it possible? Absolutely it's possible. Is it possible they're from the Pleiades? Sure. Is it possible that they're from a, they've, they've been here all along and they're from here? They're just resonating at a different vibration? Sure. So the question posed to Lou is, is there a they? You discuss they. Is there an actual they? That's a great question. I don't know if I can answer that. I think you already did, Lou. Our last soundbite from this incredible film is from Nick Pope. Big fan of Nick Pope. He worked for the British government's Ministry of Defense and was responsible for investigating UFO phenomenon to determine if they had any defense significance. So you probably know Nick Pope. He's on Ancient Aliens a lot. Big fan of Ancient Aliens. Um, Here's what he has to say regarding disclosure. At a societal level, I believe that we are completely ready to incorporate this new reality. And if the president were to go on the evening news today and say, my fellow Americans, people of the world, we're not alone, I think the reaction would would be sort of twofold. Obviously, there would be huge interest in it, but actually there wouldn't be panic in the streets. I agree. And to a certain extent, I believe we are being exposed to a lot of this in a subtle way to prepare us for disclosure but it is definitely coming. The public demands it, and we are doing our own truth-seeking to bring this reality about and to get our government to admit what we all know to be true. We are not alone. This movie, Accidental Truth, is doing its part as well to expose the truth. Incredible movie. You really, really are going to want to see it. All right, truth seekers. That concludes this episode of Majestic Truth. I hope you've enjoyed exploring the depths of the unknown with us today. Check out this amazing film, Accidental Truth, on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, wherever you get your movies. It's truly, just truly incredible, and you don't want to miss it. As always, remember the pursuit of truth and the quest for knowledge are ongoing journeys. So stay curious, stay open-minded, and always follow your dreams and keep seeking those answers. Next week is our monthly Motivation Mastery episode, and we will be discussing finding your inner drive, truth, and unleashing motivation in everyday life, complete with some tips to help you on your journey of truth. For more information on this episode about the Accidental Truth movie, visit MajesticTruth.com forward slash episode four. Thanks for joining me, Truth Seekers. I'm grateful for every listener and humbled by every subscriber. Don't forget to mark your calendars and set your alarms because our next episode will be available next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on your favorite podcast app. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. Until then, keep your eyes on the skies, your mind open, and remember, the truth is out there. For updates, behind-the-scenes content, and a chance to engage with fellow truth seekers, Stay connected with us on social media. Find us on Twitter at TruthSeekerPod, Instagram at Majestic Truth Seekers, and TikTok at Majestic Truth Seekers. Tune in next week for our monthly Motivation Mastery episode. Thanks for listening.